First, the latest results from PISA. That's the world body that ranks education systems. Well, they came out overnight. They show that Australian teenagers have fallen almost two full academic years behind students who went to school in the early 2000s. And it also shows that nearly half of students, half of our students, fail to reach national standards in maths and reading. This is shocking. Joining me now to discuss it, my panel, John Roscombe from the Institute of Public Affairs in Ikeda from the Menzies Research Centre. Gents, um, I have to say, every single time we get these international rankings, and there's a you know, few different models out there, John, every time they come out, it gets worse and worse and worse. But I mean, this PISA set of numbers this time are about the worst ever. That's right, Peter. I've been involved in education policy now for some 30 years. And when we don't focus on outcomes, when we don't listen to parents, when we don't understand how children learn, which is actually to be taught, and we focus on politics, we only focus on inputs, then these are the outcomes that we're going to get. It is a national scandal. And I only wish, as a parent, that we spent one-tenth of the time that we spend deb debating climate change and net zero and devoted it to the real future of our children, which is education. I want to go to some Indigenous issues because I, I think we need to focus on this if we can, Nikata, before we get to the end of the year, because in the immediate aftermath of The Voice, the Prime Minister was put under question in the Parliament on the issue of the Indigenous Treaty, his Makarrata Commission, and he sort of duck shoved it. You know, he said, oh, the, the Indigenous leadership, I need to talk to them, they're all mourning, I'll come back to it, which, which he never did. So we know that the Minister, Linda Burney, says there's going to be regional and local voices. As I said, Makarrata, the Treaty Commission, is still in the budget. There's millions of dollars still allocated to it, doing work, despite the voice result. And the head of the public service, a guy called Glyn Davis, he's the head of Prime Minister and Cabinet, he's out there yesterday talking to a whole lot of Canberra bureaucrats saying, we're really going to keep pushing on with this. You know, we're going to push on with this idea of basically giving funding, budget money, to individual, local, regional, Indigenous bodies to spend because they think they could perhaps spend it better than government in Canberra. That might be the case, but it's like the voice never happened. That's right, Peter. And the, oh, clearly the message hasn't got home that, that it wasn't just this particular detailed proposal or one detailed proposal people rejecting. It was a whole approach to Aboriginal affairs. It was the approach that said some people are separate, we're going to divide Australia by race and we're going to treat Australians as separate categories. Now, that, that was emphatically rejected. It could not have been clearer. And it's up now to the Prime Minister and his ministers to start looking for another way forward, one that hopefully will be more effective than the one we've been doing for the last 50 years. I mean, I think what Glyn Davis says about local decision-making over funding, or of course, you know, as Liberals, we kind of accept that that's always going to be better, that decisions are made closer to the ground, but it's just a Band-Aid. You know, we need a fundamental root and branch look at the whole way we've been going on Aboriginal policy for the last 50 years, this idea of separatism and separate development and, and just, you know, really refocus on, on, on getting results.